Hello, this is Computer Concepts and Applications at Neosho County Community College, and in this video lecture series, we'll be beginning in Chapter 8 of the textbooks, which is working with uh, formatting worksheets using Excel, Microsoft Excel. You'll see in my screen here, I, I went ahead and opened up the Microsoft Excel program. Please take a moment and do the same. Turn with me to page 223 of your textbooks. Remember that Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet application that's used to create, analyze, and present information that is organized into a grid of columns and rows. Data is then calculated, it can be graphed, and then you can also perform what-if analysis during one or more of the values. We will also be working in individual workbooks and then a collection of worksheets. If you're using a tablet, you may consider using a USB wireless keyboard because part of this chapter involves uh, some typing. Turning over to page 224, we'll first begin with create and editing a new worksheet. When you start a new blank workbook, you begin at a worksheet that is divided into columns and rows. The intersection of a column and a row is called a cell, into which you type the text, a value, or a formula. The cell with the green border around its edges is called an active cell. Each cell is identified with the letter of the column and the uh, number of the row. For example, A1 refers to column A and row 1. To create a new workbook, generally you would begin a new worksheet by entering uh, titles and column and row headings to give the worksheet an organizational layout. Next, you would then enter the values in the columns and the rows. We're going to complete the worksheet by inserting formulas that perform calculations or otherwise summarize data. On page 224, we have uh, created a new workbook. Let's go ahead and put our cursor in cell A1, and we're going to type in the text, car purchase cost. You can then go ahead and tap or press enter, and we're going to then go to cell A2. Next, we're going to type in pre-owned Ford Focus sedan. And this information can be found on the bottom of page 225. We're then going to go to uh, cell A6, excuse me, cell A4, and we're going to type in total purchase price. And then in cell A6, loan details. Alright, next we're going to move our cursor over to cell B7. Let's type in the remaining row headings uh, that can be found on the bottom of page 225. If you need to pause the video, please take a moment to do so. Once the remaining row headings have been entered, we'll now go into cell F4 and begin putting in the values of our total purchase price. The total purchase price of this vehicle is 16700 and no pennies. You'll notice after you press the Enter key, Excel does not display the decimal place values that you typed. By default, zeros to the right of the decimal are not stored or shown. We're going to learn how to format these cells to show the decimals in this unit. Please take a moment and type in the remaining, of, uh, remaining values found on page 226.
A formula is used to perform mathematical operations on values. A formula entry always begins with an equal sign. This indicates to Excel the entry that follows is going to be a calculation. Following the equal sign, type the first cell address that contains a value you want to use. You also need to use mathematical operators, such as plus, and then type the second cell address. Continue typing cell addresses with mathematical operations between each address until finished. Some examples of mathematical operations can be found in the middle of page 226. They include addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let's go ahead and click and make E9 the active cell. We're calculating the total loan payments. To do that, we'll be taking the uh, amount of payment and multiplying it by the term. The formula will be an equal sign, E7, multiplied, which is of the asterisk on the number 8, times E8. From there, you may go ahead and press the Enter key to get the total loan payment value. Excel then calculates the result and displays the value in cell E9. Notice that the worksheet uh, area displays the formula results while the entry in the formula bar displays the formula used to calculate the result. If you put your cursor on cell E9, you'll see the formula bar up at the top of the screen as well as the result in cell E9. Next, let's travel to cell F13. Let's go ahead and press an equal sign here. And another way to enter a formula is to use the pointing method. This allows you just to type or click the desired cell instead of typing in their cell address. So let's select cell E9, which is the value of the total loan payments. Then we're going to select the plus sign to add it to cell E11. And then press Enter. For cell E11, it should be the down payment made at per at purchase, which the textbook reflects 1700. Looks like I've placed mine in the incorrect cell. I'm going to show you how to move a value to the correct location. If you want to move a cell to another cell, you want to position your mouse on the outside edge of the cell to get what they call the move handle. Select that one time and hold. Drag and drop it into cell E11. Now we'll also need to do another uh, formula in cell F13 to get the correct result. So in cell F13, we'll create a formula that begins with equals, then select cell E9 plus E11 and press enter. The total that you should get is 18000 $621.80. Next, let's travel to cell F15. We're going to figure the cost of uh, the borrowing. Therefore, equals for the formula F13, which is the total loan payments and down payment, and we're going to subtract out the total purchase price. The total cost of borrowing for this loan is $1,921.80. Moving over to page 227, we'll now work with editing cells. A cell can be changed by making the cell active and typing a new entry to replace the existing contents. Double tap or double click to open a cell for editing a worksheet area. F2 can also be used as a shortcut. 
Let's make E7 the active cell. And we're going to increase our loan payments to $480.95. Notice all the new payment amounts that have been uh, configured. The new values are in cell E9, F13, and F15. All values updated uh, as they reflect on the new data. Next, let's edit cell F4, the total purchase price. You can double click with inside of the cell or simply click F2 on your keyboard. Position your insertion point between the 6 and the 7, and instead of a 6, we're going to type a 5. So our new purchase price is 15700 Next, let's select E11 as the active cell. And instead of 1700 for the down payment, our new down payment was only 700 Let's save our document. Save your document to your student data files or the location of your choice. And we're going to save this as car cost and your last name. On page 228 of your textbook, we'll now begin by formatting the cells, which is topic 8.2. Very similar to Microsoft Word, the Home tab in Excel contains all of the formatting features that allows you to change the appearance of text, values, or formula results. The font group contains buttons to change font and font size and color, as well as applying bold, italic, underlying, borders, and shading. There's also an alignment group that allows you to align values within the cell's edges. We can select cells using the mouse or we can select cells using touch. With our car cost workbook open, let's go ahead and select A1 to make it the active cell. And we're going to select a range of cells from A1 down to F15, which is all of the data in our workbook. A range is recognized by a colon that separates the values. So this range is A1 colon F15. Let's change our font face to a font called Century Gothic. And if you do not want to scroll through your font list, simply type C to pull up all of the C's in your list. Once you find Century Gothic, go ahead and select it one time. Select in any of the cells to deselect. Next, let's select cell range A1, A2, and bold. Notice the entire text in A1 and A2 is bold including the characters that spill over the edge of column A. Next, we're going to format the values. By default, cells and new worksheets are all in the general format, which has no specific appearance options. Buttons in the number group of the Home tab are used to format the appearance of numeric entries in a worksheet, adding a dollar symbol, a comma in the thousands, and or adjusting the number of decimal places will all improve the appearance of values. We'll be using the number format list arrow to choose other formats for dates and times and fractions and so forth. Select the cell range E4 through range F15. From here, we're going to select the comma style button in the number group. Here you'll notice that the pennies have been added as well as the decimal. Next, let's select F4. Now we're going to change our number formatting to accounting style. Notice a dollar sign appears with the accounting style. 
The accounting number format adds a currency symbol, a comma in thousands, and two decimal places. Next, please turn over to your books on page 230. Let's also select cell E7 and apply the accounting number format. Select range F13 through F15 and apply the accounting style format. In cell E8, we're going to decrease the decimal button because this number is reflecting the number of months in which we will be paying back our loan. To decrease the decimal, use the increase decrease buttons on the number group. One decimal place is removed and each time you tap it, another decimal place will then be removed. Borders in various styles and colors can be added to the top, left, bottom, or right edge of a cell. Borders are used to underscore column headings or totals, or to otherwise emphasize cells. Let's select cell F13. In this cell, we're going to select the bottom border button under the font group. Now select cell F15. From here, we're going to select the top and bottom border in the same area. Tap or click in any other cell to view the border style that has been applied. A worksheet title is often centered across the columns used in the worksheet. The Merge and Center button in the Alignment group is used to combine a group of cells into one large cell and center its contents. We'll be using the Merge and Center button arrow to choose to merge without centering or to unmerge a merged cell. Let's select Range A1, F1. Then select the Merge and Center button in the Alignment group. Next, select range A2, F2, and select the Merge and Center button. Now, we'll do a quick save, Control S, and then we're ready to move on to our next topic. Keep in mind that you could use the formatting using the mini toolbar. There's also some shortcuts that are found on page 231. Those same shortcuts are also used in other Microsoft Office application programs. On page 232 of your textbook, we're going to learn about adjusting column width and row height, as well as changing alignment styles. We'll begin with a new worksheet. We're still working within the uh, workbook, but here we'll be working in a new worksheet completely. Each column width in a new worksheet is 8.43 and each row height is 15. We can make our cells larger by widening a column's width or increasing a row's height. In many instances, Excel automatically makes columns wider and rows taller to accommodate cell entry, formula result, or format that you apply. We will be changing our column widths and heights in this next step. We're going to begin with the same worksheet as we have been working in our uh, car cost sheet. All right, go ahead and make any active, make any cell active in column E. Doesn't matter which, which row you select, which cell you select, as long as it's in column E. Next, we're going to select the format button in the cells group on the home tab. Under the Format option, we have the option of setting our column width. From here, we're going to type in 15 and press OK. Column E now has a width of 15. Next, let's make any cell active in column F and let's do the same thing as we did previously 
However, this time our column width will only be set to 10. Notice when we select 10 and press enter, we have the numeric sign that appears in column F. This is a common error that occurs when the column's width has been made too narrow to show all of the characters. Make active F4. From the format dropdown, you can select to auto fit the column width. This way, the column automatically best fits to the content within the cell. Please select range A1, A2. Here we're selecting multiple rows or columns so we can change the height and width of more than one row or column at the same time. Let's select from the format drop-down menu to change the row height. 26 is what we are going to set our row height to be. Under the alignment group of the home tab contains buttons to align the entry of a cell horizontally and vertically. You can also align to the left, center, right, horizontally, or at the top, middle, or bottom. With A1 and A2 still selected, let's choose the middle alignment tool. This way, the text is then centered vertically within the cells. Make active any cell in row 15. Let's change the row height of row 15 to be 26. Next, let's select range A15, F15, and align to the middle the same way we have done previously. Next, let's save. On page 234 of your textbook, a new topic is introduced. Entering or copying data with the fill command and using autosum. The autofill feature in Excel is used to enter data automatically based on a pattern or series that exists in an adjacent cell or range. For example, if Monday is entered into cell A1, autofill can automatically enter the rest of the days. When no pattern or series applies, the fill feature can be used to copy an entry or formula across or down to the other cells. New to Excel 2013, is a term called flash fill, a feature that works to automatically fill data as soon as a pattern is recognized. When flash fill presents a suggested list in a dim text, you can press enter and accept the suggestion or ignore it. A flash fill options button appears when a list is presented with options to undo, accept, or select change cells. If you're using Microsoft Office 2013 to complete this exercise, you will have the option of the flash fill feature. If not, you will continue to use the same autofill feature uh, that was introduced previously. To begin this process, we are going to select a new worksheet uh, therefore, we're going to use the Quick Access Toolbar at the very top left-hand corner. And if you do not have the New option selected, please be sure there's a check mark beside it. Then select the New icon to begin a new workbook. Let's type the entries in cell A2, range A13, as shown in the image on page 234. So beginning on cell A2, we're going to type in the headings that are listed on page 234, beginning with expenses. We'll also change the width of column A to 18. Next, we'll make B1 the active cell and we will type in capital S E P. -E. 
Next, select range B1 through B11. B1 through I1, that would be. So select range B1 through I1. In the editing group, we are going to then select the drop-down for fill, very uh, far right-hand corner of the screen. We have a few options to choose from. We're going to select series. Then select the autofill option and select OK. Notice how the range of headings now range from September through April in the selected range. Next, let's go to cell B3. And enter the value of 875. Press Enter. We are going to select another range B3 through I3. We'll use the same fill. However, this time we're going to select right. The housing remains the same each month. Enter the remaining values as shown in the image on page 235. Next, we'll be entering the income on our worksheet. Make cell B11 the active cell and type in 1750. The income will remain the same for each month. Fill right using the drop down underneath the editing group. Seventeen fifty is copied to the cells in the selected range. Turning to page two thirty six, we'll be using the sum function to add all of the expenses in cell B nine. We will be using the sum function. It's faster and easier to use than writing a formula. So from here, we'll be selecting B nine to make it the active cell. Then, select the Auto Sum button under the Editing group in the far right-hand corner. Notice how the data is automatically selected and the formula has been created for us. Press Control, Enter to complete the formula or press the check mark on the formula bar. With B9 still the active cell, we can now fill our formula all the way over through cell I9. To do that, you'll notice a small black or green square in the bottom right-hand corner of the cell. Position your mouse directly on top of that cell, and let me zoom in so you can see the option and when your mouse becomes the black crosshair, click and hold and drag over to cell I9. Check your references in the formula bar by selecting each of the results. Next, let's select cell D13. The formula to receive the cash that's left over will be equals B11, our income, and subtracting out B9, our total expenses. Complete the process through cell I9 by using the fill. Next, let's select cell J1 and type in a new heading column all total. In cell J3, we'll also use the auto sum tool. 
Excel looks for values immediately above or left of the active cell. Because there are no values that are above, Excel correctly suggests adding the values to the left in the same row. Next, press Enter. Then we can use the autofill to go down all the way through the bottom. Now, we also have a few zeros referencing row 10 and row 12. In those rows, we can just delete out the contents. Next, let's select cell J12. Make sure that you've deleted out uh, the contents of that cell as well as J10. This workbook is going to be saved as school budget and your last name. This is the second file in which you'll be uploading for this assignment. On page 238, we will continue to learn about inserting and deleting rows or columns. With the school budget still open, let's make any cell active in row four. From here, we're going to select the insert ribbon at the top. From here, we'll select insert sheet rows. And if you're using 2010, um, you'll want to go back to the home ribbon to find this. It's actually the insert tab is at the very far right hand side. Here's where we're going to select insert sheet rows. A new blank row is inserted between housing and food. We have a new heading now called utilities. In A4, we'll type in utilities. The data for the utilities is found on page 238. Make J3 the active cell and fill down to include a total for row 4. Select range A1, A2, and we'll select to insert sheet rows. Notice two rows have now been added above the worksheet. In cell A1, we'll type our title, which is the proposed school budget. And in cell A2, we'll type the first year of program. Merge and center A1 into columns A through J and do the same with cell A2. Make any cell in column J active. And let's insert a sheet column at the drop-down list. Inserting columns um, is done rather easily, as well as deleting columns and rows. To delete a column, put your cell in any row 10, any cell in row 10. From here, instead of selecting the Insert menu, we'll be selecting the Delete option. Then select Delete Sheet Rows. Row 10 has been removed from the worksheet, and existing rows below are shifted up to fill the space. Let's do a quick save, Control S. On page 240 of your textbooks, we'll now be learning about sorting and applying cell styles. With the school budget still open, let's select range AK through K10. 
A5 through K10. Notice you do not include the heading A4 or the total row in the sort range. From here, we'll be using the sort and filter button under the editing group. We are going to sort from A to Z. Now our expenses have been placed in alphabetical order. Select A5 through K10. Tap or click the sort and edit menu and let's choose custom sort. At the sort dialog box, we're going to tap or click the sort by list arrow and make sure that column K is the correct column selected. Tap or click the order list arrow on the far right hand side and make sure it's defaulted to largest to smallest. Select OK. Now we can see what the majority of the expenses are, starting with the largest and then going to the smallest. The range is rearranged in descending order from highest to lowest. Tap and click in any cell to deselect the range and review your new order of expenses. Let's make cell A1 the active cell. And in the cell styles button, we're going to go ahead and select that and look for style heading one. Select it one time. Next, let's make cell A2 the active cell and select heading four. Apply the heading four style two cells A4, A13, and A15. One way to select multiple cells that are non-adjacent is to use the control key. So select cell A4, pull down control, select cell A13, and also A15, and apply the heading four styles to each. Let's select B3, range K3. On our heading styles, we'll be using accent one. And it looks like accent one in the theme style, cell styles section of the cell style gallery. Next, we'll select range B5 through K15. Let's apply the comma style in the number formatting. Next, select the range B15 through K15. Here, we'll apply the total style, which can be found under our themes. The total style can also be found under the titles and headings section. Then, deselect your table so you can see the formatting changes you have made, and save. On page 242 of your textbooks, one of the last topics we'll be covering in this unit is how to change the orientation of the cell formulas. To look at our print settings, let's go to the File menu and select Print. Here you can see a print preview of what your uh, document would look like. Notice there are two pages if you look down at the very bottom. You can go to page two, which you'll see there's a couple of columns that go off of the page. From here, we can change the landscape 
uh, orientation. It's towards the midsection of your print screen. Right now we're set to portrait. I'm going to choose the drop down and change it to landscape. This way the entire document is displayed uh, on one page. Then let's go ahead and select the home button to go back to our uh, workbook. Please select the file tab and then select options. If you select the advanced tab on the left hand side, we can take a closer look at our Excel options. Look for a section titled display options for this workbook. Tap or click to insert a check mark in the show formula cells instead of their calculated results. Select OK. Now you can see the formulas that you've written instead of the results. Slide or scroll to the right if necessary to review your workbook as well as the formulas. Next, let's select the File menu and then choose Print. Notice with the formulas added, there is no room on the page to view all of the contents. Therefore, we'll use the Scaling option, which is the last option on our print settings. Right now it says no scaling, but we can fit the sheet on one page. This allows us to view all of our document on one page. Let's choose Save As, and we'll save this as School Budget with Formulas. Save and close the workbook. We'll now open up the original school budget that we began with. Make sure that sheet one is the active sheet at the bottom. And you'll notice at the bottom we can rename our sheet by right clicking on sheet one and then selecting rename. Let's name this sheet first year. We'll also rename sheet two to second year. Let's go back to the first year tab to make it active. Select range A4 through A15. Let's copy this content by selecting Control C or selecting copy from the home ribbon. Once copied, make the second year worksheet active. Then put your cursor in cell A4, and now we'll be using the Paste button under the clipboard group. Notice when you paste, it doesn't keep the same formatting styles that we have applied previously. Choose the mini dropdown for the Paste options. From here, you can have uh, you have the option of keeping the source column widths, which is the middle option in the second row. Let's go back and make the first year <clears throat> the active worksheet. Now select range A1 through K3. And copy. We'll go back to the second year and place our cursor in cell A1.
and paste. Edit A2 to reflect that this is the second year. Enter the data, complete the formulas, and format the cells in the second year worksheet shown on page 245. With the second year still the active worksheet, select range A5 through A10. Let's use the increase indent button on the alignment group of the home tab. Make cell A11 active and increase the indent twice. Next, we'll change the orientation to landscape. On the first year, we will also indent range A5 through A10. We will also indent A11 two times. Save the workbook with the same name. Next, we'll be opening up a data file called NSCF Supplies Inventory. The data file can be found attached to this assignment on Inside NC, or you may also use the student data CD that came with your textbook. Take a moment and locate your student data files for Chapter 8 called NSCS Supplies Inventory. When it's open, please remember to resave the file and include uh, your last name at the end. Slide or scroll down the worksheet area until the titles and column headings are no longer visible. We'll be using the Find and Select button under the Editing group. Under Find and Select, let's choose Go To. We'll select Type in A4. Next, we can also choose the Find and Select option, and this time, let's choose Go to Special. We'll select the last cell in the Go to Special dialog box, and select OK. Use the last cell option <clears throat> to go to a special dialog box in a large worksheet to move the active cell to the bottom right of the worksheet. Use the go to move the active cell back to A4. Go to cell A4. If necessary, you can slide and scroll up until you can see the first three rows of titles and column headings. With A4 being the active cell, under the View tab, we have an option to freeze the panes within the window group. Select Freeze Panes. Then select Freeze Panes from the drop-down. From here, now if you scroll through the document, the top three rows have been frozen. So, the only data that is going to scroll through will be our list. Notice that rows 1 through 3 do not scroll out of the viewing area. <clears throat> Column headings can be formatted to stand out from the rest of the worksheet by shading the background of a cell and rotating the cell entries. Slide or scroll to the top of the worksheet and let's select cell A1. From cell A1, we are going to fill 
uh, with an orange color. Under the Home tab, select the Paint Bucket option. Choose an orange color of your choice. You can also use the themes over on the midsection of the home ribbon and choose an accent color of your choice. I'm going to increase my font just a little bit and change my font color back to black. Now let's select range A2, M2. I'm going to use accent 6 at a 60%. And because I think white is hard to read, I'm going to change my <clears throat> colors back to black, my font. Then I'll select range A3, M3, and I'll choose a lighter shade, maybe 20%. Then select M3 to make it the active cell. Adjust your row height to size 30. I'm also going to change the column width to 10. With M3 still active, we'll select the Wrap Text button under the Alignment group. This way the text will wrap and we'll still be able to read it. Let's go to cell D3 and make it active. From here, we'll change our column width to 9. And wrap the text. Let's select range E3, L3. From the alignment group, we will choose to angle clockwise, counterclockwise. Now we'll change our orientation to landscape. We'll also scale to fit all on one page. Going back to the worksheet display now, I'm going to do a save. This concludes the Microsoft Excel First Lab exercises. Please, pre please upload all of the associated files to the, this appropriate assignment area. We'll next be doing Lab 2, which concentrates more on formulas and what-if analysis. Thanks for joining, and I'll look forward to working with you again in Chapter 9.